We're but beginning to perceive the vast complexity of the mechanism, taking these sliding movements to be a simple adaptation of ropes and rigging according to an order predefined mathematically, even fractally, is rather insufficient an explanation. Other factors should be taken into account. First, it would seem that the fibers intrinsically possess the ability to distend or retract thanks to their arrangement. Closer scrutiny reveals that ringed superpositions between the fibers become distended just before the overall movement ensues. This could be the first stage, a form of preparation before the request to move is dealt with. To respond to the direction of the stress, the biomechanics of the microvacuoles are assisted by the added capacity of the fibers to migrate around a nodal point, itself encompassing another fiber. Finally, collagen 4 and 6 seem to be able to shear off and reform as if nothing had happened. They also seem to be able to dissociate into several parts, just like the hydra-headed monster of mythology. Meeting any and every request to morph mechanically in space. This ability of matter to organize itself spatially offers an infinite potential for movement. Collagen Armature is only one player in this choreography. The permanent lubrication by glycoaminoglycans through these diaphanous fields, where the drops are reminiscent of morning dew, is omnipresent. As is the migration of liquid within the fibers, suggesting that hydraulic mechanisms must play a decisive role here. The appearance of bubbles and bursting whenever a structure meets the atmosphere or during traction signifies the existence of a pressure equilibrium. Moreover, one should not overlook the importance of these glycoaminoglycans, which are at different concentrations according to the location in the body. Whatever the final answer, the flexibility of these tissues relies on a mechanism of which one of the underlying modes of action could be tensegrity. Yet tensegrity cannot account for everything here. This complex sliding system, which maintains the structures and keeps them mobile, is therefore modified according to the circumstances and is subjected to the natural laws of change. This occurs either as a result of overloading, as in obesity, in which the vacuoles are dilated by adipocytes, or by wear, as in tenosynovitis,